Hello, thanks for joining me. As you can see, I'm in the workshop again and today I'm going to fit new chain and sprockets onto my Triumph Scrambler 1200. Very exciting. I've got a lovely DID gold chain to put on here. Um, more than uh, anything else, that's going to be a nice little bit of bling which will um, make the bike look um, much nicer. I've actually, over time, I've got to be putting these DID uh, uh, gold and black uh, chains, uh, the X-Wing chains, on all of my bikes. I'm running them on all of my bikes now um, and I'm very, very happy with them. I converted my Harley Davidson from belt drive to chain drive a couple of years ago and I put one of these uh, DID black and gold chains on and it's been absolutely uh, terrific. I run the same on my uh, KTM and on my uh, Norton Commando. Uh, so um, yeah, lovely, lovely bit of chain. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm changing it is that the old chain is getting worn and, and it's looking a bit tatty and it, it, it's just coming nice to, to, to brighten the bike up as well. Um, when you change the chain you should always change the sprockets as well so in actual fact my sprockets aren't badly worn at all i had a look at them you can hardly see any wear on them at all but um, it's just good practice to always fit new chain and sprockets together as a as a new set so um, i've got these uh, jt um, uh, sprockets um, they're, they're very good well known the front one i've got here is one of these ones that I've, i haven't even taken them out of the packet yet actually but uh, when I take it out of the packet, um, I'll show you it's one of the, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll take it out of the packet right now. I'll just uh, get, uh, get a knife to, to slice the packet open. And um, we got, so I just want to point out, it's one of these ones with the, the rubber on each side, rubber ring on there, which is designed there sort of to dampen the, the chain. Um, and uh, makes the running uh, a lot quieter and you know possibly reduces wear as well so that's nice and then this is the the, the rear pocket which again might as well open not to open the packet yet and uh, yeah so, so that's going to look nice as well because that's nice uh, black anodized uh, black um, um, sprocket as well so that'll look uh, a lot more uh, tidy. Now it's a 44 tooth on the rear and a 16 tooth on the front and I'm sticking with the, the standard sizes I'm not changing the gearing quite happily with the gearing and uh, the chain is a hundred and fourteen links long and it's uh, um, uh, a 525 just yet yeah 525 um, just double checking there before I say that to you yeah 525 size chain so you need 525 size chain and sprockets front one 44 teeth rear, uh, sorry front one 16 teeth rear one 44 teeth right so that's what's going on very exciting so now let's uh, get on with removing the, the old one so what, what i'm going to do first of all is remove the front uh, sprocket uh, cover here and just loosen off that front sprocket before i start taking off the chain and, and the back wheel and everything the front sprocket cover here is held on with these couple of um, 8mm bolts. So I'll just loosen those off. And if you've had this off before, if you've removed it before, you'll know that there's the uh, rear brake master cylinder under there as well and various other gubbins. So just going to first of all um, loosen these off and then and get to the uh, mechanism underneath. If you watch my uh, maintenance videos, you know I love tools, and this is, uh, I just sort of grabbed this, it's a lovely little tool. Um, it's like a it's ratchet drive, but it's just finger ratchet drive, so it's got like this kind of, uh, you know, nice soft rubber grip, you get your fingers around the side. So if you're just undoing something that's got a fairly long thread, but it's not tight, you can just do it with your fingers like that. I have a lot of totally unnecessary tools, you don't need anything like this, but it's just because I spent so much time in the workshop working on my bikes and it's you know, it's one of my favorite hobbies i just love buying little bits of tools like this and why shouldn't i so whenever i go to bike shows i'm always scouring the tool stands on bike shows and you know I usually come back with a little trophy of something like these i've got a set of them in in the three main driver side and another thing i've got loads of that i use uh, are these little magnetic trays so i always anything i take off 
I've, I've got loads of these. So I've got a couple down on my work, workbench here. Um, just so it just keeps them tidy, stops them rolling away. And you can group things in the in the different metal containers. So that's the that's the outer cover off. And by the way, you can probably see that's looking a little bit, well, a bit tatty. So what I'll probably do is is I'll probably just clean that up with a bit of scotch bright um, before I put it back on, if I've got time and if I remember. Right, so underneath this cover we, uh, we've got this, this plastic on there, you can see there's a rear brake master cylinder. So that's a torque uh, driver, torque screw there, uh, to, I need to uh, undo to remove this. The size you need is a T25, so that's a T25. And get this plastic cover off. There we are, and that releases the um, the rear brake master cylinder as well, which needs to put somewhere safe. I'll just rest it down there at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll see what I'll do with that in a moment. Right, so I'll just take the, the uh, torque screw out of here. <clears throat> you see there's a little bit of corrosion on the end of there. I find that with uh, with most of the fittings uh, when I'm taking the bike apart. Let me get that somewhere we can focus in on that a bit better. Yeah, just yeah. So what, what I'm what I'm doing with everything that I take off the bike as I take it off, I'm just cleaning it up with a wire brush. Uh, I've got actually got a wire brush attachment in my pillar drill that I use. It's nice and fast. And then I just put a little bit of copper grease on everything. Stops that um, corrosion building up. Anyway, that's that's that bit off. Right. So now we've got this this under under plastic cover where we've got some more bolts holding that on two down there and, and two up here so I need to undo that get to this one down here get me a bit lost the cylinder out of the way whoop I can't I just took it over here for the moment try and keep it reasonably upright <coughs> And there's quite, as I thought, I thought there would be, uh, there's quite a lot of build-up here, here, and that's just kind of dried up. Um, or I'll put oil on and then so the oil will mix with dirt and it sort of flings off. So I'm just going to dig all of that out and, and clean that up. But this is what we're getting to here. This is the front uh, drive sprocket and that's the nut that I need to undo. Now, again, I can see that that's quite, uh, it's quite corroded. So what I'm going to do, just before I start cleaning this off, I'm just going to put a bit of releasing fluid, a bit of releasing agent on that, that nut and, and bolt um, so it can just be working whilst I uh, clean up around here. This is some uh, WD-40 uh, penetrating oil, fast release penetrant, penetrating oil I always called it. So uh, just going to squirt a little bit and then nut to sort of work into the thread and then a little bit at the back there. So hopefully they may be working some down the back. Yeah, and that just have a couple of minutes now to be penetrating whilst I dig all of this out. Uh, I'm going to get some newspaper underneath because all that's going to drop off and then probably just get a big screwdriver and, uh, and gouge that out, clean it up. Right, I've got a large flat-ended screwdriver here. I'm just really, just anything that I'm using, <laughs> essentially using it as a spade just to dig this stuff off. You can see there's quite a, it's quite a build up here. Let's see. I've got some newspaper underneath to catch all of this. Yeah. Mm, very satisfying cleaning that off, I have to say. Don't have to get it all off because of course it's just going to build up again and it's doing absolutely no harm. Uh, just uh, just cleans it up a bit so I can uh, so I can get to the uh, get to the sprocket there now. Just a bit more white round. 
it doesn't have to be immaculate because of course it's going to get my dirt building up around there anyway and I guess in effect it's kind of acting as an anti-corrosion but there we are that's a bit better isn't it a bit more tidy than that and uh, I can get to this this nut nicely now this nut has a, a, a lock a tab washer with a little tab bent over you can see there's a little tab if I just uh, actually turn the back wheel a bit you can see the tab better and put it on the top there so you need to bend that tab back up before you can undo the the nut the easiest way to do that is with a little chisel I've got a little cold chisel here and get that underneath and just um, got a mallet here and that's just bending it back up so Right, got, I've got that going up. I'm just just going to get a little punch, a flat with a uh, flat end, just to, to straighten that off now. Yeah, so now I've actually uh, got the tab lifted up, but it's actually easy with a punch to to flip, flatten it out, rather than with a chisel. Right, hopefully you can see that that's all bent back now so that that nut will now turn hopefully right I've just moved the camera <clears throat> around a little bit out of the way because this nut is going to be on pretty tight it's uh, torqued down to 180 newton meters which is a, a fairly high torque setting um, therefore in order to, to, to get it off I've put the bike into gear put it in in, in top gear and I'm got, you can obviously use a, a bar on it, but I've got um, I've got a rattle gun here, and this is quite a, a powerful uh, rattle gun. This is a Dewalt um, rattle gun, which um, I think it goes up to something like a, a thousand foot pound on on maximum setting. So um, this is my you know go to for uh, getting off uh, tough items, um, you know such as um, nuts that hold on drive sprockets. Um, it, um, it's a 36 millimeter is this so I've got a, a very large 36 millimeter socket here and it's a it's you know it's a, a six-sided socket rather than a 12-sided socket so I'll get that on wish me luck we'll uh, we'll give that a go and see what happens there we are straight off that I have to say is the benefit of having tool <laughs> this tool rattle go that's why I bought it it's uh, it's it wasn't cheap, but the number of times I've used it for jobs like this since I got it, um, it I think it's paid for itself in terms of time saved and and anguish, as well. That just came off am amazingly easily, didn't it? Right, great. This chain, when it comes off, is going straight in the bin. It's not being used for anything else. So even though it might seem a little brutal. Um, the way I'm going to get it off is by simply cutting uh, through one of the links with my angle grinder. I found just over the years of practice that is the quickest and easiest way. And particularly if you're not wanting to, to reuse the chain, it really doesn't matter. All you want to do is just cut it so you can get it uh, off. So this is going to be noisy, I'm sorry, but I've got my angle grinder here with just a thin metal cutting disc on it. Uh, and I'm just going to hack through one of the links um, down here somewhere round about where you can see I think And that's the chain cut so you can see how quick and easy is that and it doesn't matter because um, the chains just going straight in the bin um, I should just say a couple of things about that if you're going to attempt it is obviously make sure you've got the angle grinder somewhere where you're not going to damage the the swing arm up here or the tire or whatever and also I should point out I have fire extinguishers in the uh, workshop here 
should any of those uh, sparks go astray. But uh, you know, I make sure that there's, there's there's nothing in the way of the sparks before I start it. So just a quick sort of safety point there. Right, so that's the chain cut, so I can uh, get that chain off, and then I'm going to uh, remove the rear wheel. Removing the rear wheel on uh, the, the uh, drive here is very easy, very easy job. You just need to undo this nut here, then uh, push the rear spindle through, and the, and the rear wheel will drop out. Um, but I, I just want, at this point, I'm just going to say something which I do, just a point of practice that I do. I made a video um, earlier, um, quite a while ago, you, you can find it on the channel, in which I put together an emergency toolkit to carry on the bike when I'm, I'm touring. And a job like this, removing the rear wheel, is something that you may have to do when you're out on the road if you get a puncture or some other thing like that. So I like to make sure that I can actually do that job with the tools that I'm carrying on the bike. So this is my toolkit that I put together for carrying on the bike. So I'm just going to open this up and get out the required tools. So I've just got a little... Um, ratchet drive there and a 27 millimeter socket here that's what you need for undoing the the rear so i'm going to make sure that i can actually take the rear wheel off with the tools i'm carrying with me on the bike because if i can't then these tools are useless they're just going at extra weight so as i say it's very simple you just need to obviously need to put a bit of force on here because it's quite tight but there we go and just slacken that off And then I just use the the edge of the uh, the ratchet drive to tap. It's not it's not tap it's to tap it through because it's uh, it's grease. I always grease it before I put it in. So just to tap it, tap it through a little bit to so I can get hold of the other, the other end of it and uh, start pulling it. So take that nut right off now. There's a nut. There's a little washer behind it. Take those off. And then just, just push that through with my finger. That's the little uh, stay for the adjuster. Put that down. We go around the other side. I can grab the other end of the spindle and pull it out. And then pull the wheel out. And there we are. That's the rear wheel off. Then I can get to that. Uh, I can get to the, the rear wheel now to, to, to remove that rear uh, sprocket. Just got to make sure that the uh, the rear brake, you maybe can't see that, but I'll just put it back on the hanger so it's not hanging on the brake pipe, put it straight on the brake pipe, just popped it back on the hanger. But uh, that's straightforward. Right, let's get to changing these sprockets. Here's the front, front sprocket then. You can see I've, I've already removed the, the retaining nut uh, there. So there's the little um, washer um, you know, with the, the flat on, that comes off. Um, and then the actual sprocket itself just slides off the, the, the spline. So that's it. So that's that's going in the bin, that scrap. And, uh, and put the, the new sprocket on. I, <laughs> even though I know, I always just double check. So I just uh, kind of line the two sprockets up. It's a kind of habit I, I, I've developed over the years, just to make sure it is the same size, the same number of teeth. Um, I, I actually don't think it matters which way around this goes, but uh, you always put sprockets on with the writing to the outside. So if you can see the, the writing on there, there's no writing on that back side. So writing goes on the outside. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit more grease on that spline before I put the sprocket on. So I've got my Castrol LM grease here, if you can see see that. Um, so I'll just Grease up the spline a little bit, just a little bit like that on there, and it do no harm just to get a little bit of thread where the uh, the nut goes on as well, and that will hopefully mean that when I come to change this one, it will come off just as easily as the old one did this time. So just got to get those spline splines lined up and uh, push it on. It's uh, this is just a bit of a fiddly job because obviously it's an exact fit. There we are, that's on. Lovely. Right, so um, you should, by rights, put a replacement washer on here 
Um, I'm being a bit naughty by putting this one back on, but I actually haven't got a re replacement. Um, so what I'll do is I'll bend over a tab a different place to the old one, so it so it doesn't break when I when I uh, bend that over. So pop that on again. What I might do is just put a bit of grease on the back of that. Before I put it on, right, and then again, you're going to just get that lined up because it's an exact fit. There we are, and then I'll put the the nut on, and again, just going to put a little bit of grease. You can see, just put a little bit of grease on the back of that uh, that nut there, and put that on finger tight. And what I'll do is. I'll then torque that down once I've got everything back together and I've got the chain on and the back wheel and everything because then you can use the, the, the chain, the back wheel and the rear brake to, to torque that down. The easiest way to torque this down actually is to get the bike off the, off the, the, the workbench, get somebody else to sit on the bike holding the rear brake on and then you can get your, your, your torque um, wrench on there and torque that down and as I say that ha has to go down to 180 newton meters which is pretty damn tight but understandably you do not want that coming off right so that's the front socket on as I say that's just uh, hand tight at the moment so I'll take the uh, the rear uh, sprocket off the off the back wheel and, and fit the new one the rear sprocket here is attached to a cush drive so it's actually possible to pull this off the the back wheel if you want to to, to take the uh, the sprocket off separately but to me it leaves sense to just it makes sense sorry to just leave it on the wheel because the wheel's holding it in place whilst you undo um, the the nuts um, again I'm using my um, my dual impact driver for this um, I, I should point out that if you're using an impact driver, it's better to use proper impact sockets. This this is a, a proper impact socket. It's not a regular socket. They're just uh, harder to to you know face up to the abuse of uh, an impact driver. So get each of these nuts off. Oh. That's interesting. The stud came out with that one. The uh, the nuts actually uh, stuck on with the stud. Oh, studs come out with that one as well. And that one, interesting. And that one so most of them are actually the studs have come out rather than the nuts but it doesn't matter it's uh, we're getting to the the same uh, tender dame and when I put it back in I'll be talking it down just the same anyway so now I should be able to uh, take that uh, old sprocket off and as you as you can probably see there it's actually well, I, well yeah actually there is somewhere on it now I look at it close and I've got it off the bike with the chain off it yeah, it's definitely worn as that. But anyway, as I said earlier, you should always change the uh, the sprocket with the chains anyway. But now looking at it, yes, that definitely does need changing. So, right, so that's the old one. You see it's a bit corroded and grotty, so the new one's going to look much nicer. So I think I'll just uh, take the opportunity to have a little bit of a clean round there um, before I put the new sprocket on. Just a bit of brake cleaner is this. Just lifts off grease and dirt and stuff. Right. That's good. Let's get the new uh, the new uh, sprocket on there. As with the front sprocket, you if in doubt, you always put it with the writing on the outside. But in actual fact, on this one, the back of it is flat, and the front there is a bit of a bevel there, as it, it's thinner on the inner bit and then thicker 
uh, where you got to the teeth, you know, for the for the width of the chain. So it's obvious which way round it goes. And I've got to say that looks so much uh, nicer than the old one, doesn't it? Now I have to say at this point, because somebody's going to point it out to me, um, you are supposed to use new nuts here. It, it does, you know, it's always advice that you use new nuts when you are changing rockets. But as you can see, particularly as the studs have come out here. I'm just putting them back in. My choice, my decision, um, but just be aware that the recommendation is always to use new nuts. Right, need to tighten these down and then torque them up. Now, because I've got the, uh, you know, the electric torque driver, the temptation is always to sort of tighten these up using the torque driver but you should you, you should never do that because of course there's a there's a serious risk that you are going to over tighten them so I always do them by hand and then finish them off with my uh, uh, torque wrench uh, and when you're doing these do it in a, a cross pattern so you see I've done that one opposite and I go to this one and opposite again and I'm not doing them very tight at this point just really sort of finger tight just to make sure that that um, bucket is seating properly. And once I'm happy that it's seated properly, then I'm tightening them up. I don't know if you can see from there, but I can see as I, as I do each one up, it just, just moves slightly as it's just kind of sitting down into place. Right, I'm happy now. So I'll just nip all of these up. And then I'll torque them down. Now the, the torque setting for these is 55 Newton meters. So I've got my medium torque wrench here. I've got a small one for small settings. I've got a big one, which I'll be using for on the, uh, on that, that nut on the front uh, sprocket and uh, I think the big one goes up to something like 300 newton meters. This one goes up to 70 so I'm just dialing it into 55 newton meters. So uh, you know I know torque, torque uh, inches are expensive but they're a good investment. Right so let's torque this down. Not clicking yet, so I'll, I'll go around once just to tighten them all up, and then I'll come back around the final setting. Right, so they're getting down quite tight. So now I'll go them, take them up to the full 55 newton meters. That's clicked. Right, so they're all down to uh, 55 newton meters. Right, so again, another bit of good practice with my torque wrench. As soon as I finish using it, I always back it off to zero, and that um, ensures that you don't over time damage the uh, you know the calibration of it. So that's right, backed right off now. So there's absolutely no pressure on that at all now. Right, good. That's the uh, rear sprocket fitted and torqued on so I'm going to pop the rear wheel back in the bike now. Just make sure everything's lined up here. That's it. So, just going to put the um, 
the washer and the lock nut on and just tighten them down finger tight so I can still move the uh, the wheel around not not too tight but that's the the rear wheel back on right I'm just going to zoom in because I want to show you something that's important here okay I've just zoomed in because I want to show so this is the the rear axle just want to show you it's important at this point I've just put the rear wheel on and there's no chain so obviously it doesn't matter how you know where the rear axle is adjusted but before I try and put the new chain on I'm going to back off this chain adjuster here because the new chain obviously is going to be shorter than the old chain I've just taken off because the old chain would have stretched over time and so if I start to try and put the new chain on now with the adjuster on its current setting I'm really going to struggle to, to get it on and match the, the ends up so I'm going to back that right off. So what I need to do, first of all, is just crack off the, the lock nut there, just loosen off that uh, lock nut, and then wind that adjuster um, right, right in. I'm going to wind it in quite, quite a long way, probably about half the length of that. And then I will slide the axle forward um, uh, so that the, you know, there's, there's a, the new chain when it goes on will be fairly slack, and it's just going to be so much easier to to uh, manhandle that chain in and get it on, get it in place. Okay, so I'll do this uh, on both sides. Right, I've got the rear wheel back on, so now for the exciting bit, and the bit I'm sure you've all been waiting for, the gold chain, the new gold chain. So this is a, a DID 525, that's the size, uh, ZVM, don't know what that stands for, you maybe know, uh, dash X, and I assume the X is for, for X ring. Lovely, I fitted these bikes, I think I mentioned a minute ago, fit, fitted these chains on my other bikes, and uh, yeah, just uh, the great quality chains. Oh, look at that. That is going to look so awesome on the bike. I'll tell you what, if you if um, your heart is not set right uh, racing by the uh, the sight of a nice new gold chain like that then you are emotionally dead to the world my friend anyway there we are and uh, the soft link of course there's the, the soft link so what you've got there is the soft link the uh, the, the washers and a little bit of uh, lube which I'll, I'll you know as I do the job I'll explain how you work that but obviously to fit this you need a uh, you know a chain uh, tool and so I'll just say a word about that. I have one here. Now, don't ask me what make this is. It's some generic unbranded thing. I bought this at a motorcycle show maybe 20 years ago. I've had it ages. And I have to be on, and they're all pretty much the same in terms of design. It's just the issue of, of, of quality. This is, is not a terrifically good quality. Well, it wasn't very expensive. I can't remember how much I paid for it. And I keep telling myself, oh, I'll invest in a in a good quality one. And I will one day, I will go out and buy myself a good quality one. But the fact is that I use this regularly. This will be the fourth chain that I've fitted this year. I fitted one on one of my other bikes and then I've done uh, two chains for, for a couple of other mates. And every time I use the tool, it works fine. It works absolutely fine. So even though it, it's quite a, a cheap tool, it's never failed me. I've always been satisfied with how it does the job. Um, so, you know, I use it and I think, well, why do I need to buy uh, another one? It's just, you know, I've got to that stage in life where I feel I, I deserve good quality tools, and particularly things that I use quite regularly like this. However, I'll be using this one today and you'll see that it's, uh, it works just fine. Uh, does this so first of all I, what I need to do is thread the the chain um, around the, the noose pockets and you've got to make sure that you get that threaded uh, correctly make sure you've got it uh, rooted uh, correctly around the swing arm and, uh, and everything it's, it's not catching anything around the chain guards um, and then um, and then we'll have a look at putting this this link on and I'll, I'll talk you through the procedure for doing that just as I'm threading this on, I'll just mention there, are, there is like a chain guide here on the swing arm. It bolts on the side here and it goes to the top of the bottom. And that is actually designed to, to wear out over time. So that will need replacing at some point. But on, on this one, it's not too bad. So I, I don't think I'm going to replace it this time. But maybe next time I fit a new chain, whenever that will be, um, it will need a new guide on there or possibly beforehand. 
but just at the moment, as I say, I'm fine with that, that's happy. Right. Get that around the front sprocket. Because I've slackened the adjusters off, I should be able to. Uh, no, I'm still uh, still struggling to get that uh, there, so I need to slacken the adjusters off just a little bit uh, further uh, here, move the wheel forward a little bit further because I want to be able to easily align both ends of the chain here. So I'll just do that now, I'll adjust that, uh, and then I can get. And so what I'm going to do is get both ends of the chain, I'll just demonstrate here, I'll do a, a close up in a minute, but I'll get both ends of the chain on the sprocket, round, and that just, the sprocket will then hold it in place, as you can see, well, you can possibly see now, I'll zoom in in a second, and that just makes life so much easier. Um, you're holding both link, uh, sides together on the sprocket, and then you can uh, fit that uh, soft link. Okay, let me back off this wheel and then I'll, I'll move the camera so you can see better what I'm doing putting the, uh, the soft link in. Right, so I'll just uh, zoom the camera in so you can see I've got the new chain on now and I've got the two ends there lined up on the sprocket, at the back of the sprocket, uh, so that they just hold it in place and it then just makes it very easy to, uh, to fit the soft link. So what you've got with, with the soft uh, link here, um, the, the, the procedure, um, well, I'll show you the way I, I do it is what I do is I, I put the the link in there uh, and then I press the the, the front uh, plate on and I use a vernier gauge uh, you know checking against the, the other links to make sure that I'm not pressing it in too far because if you if you squeeze it in too far um, then there's a, a risk that you're going to damage and distort the um, uh, the X uh, X ring um, washers that, that go on here. So I always just check that with the vernier gauge. So you'll see as you go on. So uh, you get a little sachet of grease here in the soft link. So um, what I do is put a bit of grease on the link there. Just spread that round nicely on both the pins. Um, and then try and get this in where you can see it. Then you got you got you get four of these little um, X washers. So put two of them on the back there. Then thread that through. Thread that um, through the link. Even with it on the sprocket here, it's a bit tight. There we are. That's because you've got to get it absolutely straight lined up. So that's um, through from the rear. Then I'll put a little bit more grease on both of these. And then I'll put the X rings on the front. And then we need to press this, uh, this plate on. Now, so you know which way round it goes, it actually says DID. You might not be able to read that, but it says DID on one side and the black is blank. And also the outer side is just a little bit beveled, so you can tell it's the outer side. So that, that goes on there. So now the next job is to press that on. And this is where I use the vernier to, just to check how far I've pressed it on. So I'll get out my uh, chain uh, adjusting tool and there's the, uh, the, the the bit of kit that I need here uh, for, for just pressing it on and that's the, this plate here which just you know goes on the on the front and, and presses that um, presses that uh, front plate onto the pins. Okay let me show you how I've got this tool set up so hopefully you can see. So what I've got in it's basically you've got this screw thread which uh, uh, focus on it. Yeah, you've got this screw thread here, which you turn here, which just you know closes this end. So what I've got here is this backing plate, which goes across the um, the the link, and then I've got a front plate, which I'm squeezing in. The front plate again goes across the link, but you see there's two holes in it there. 
that those pins can then stick through so you're not actually pressing onto the pins you're just pressing the plate on uh, and then this this goes in just to, to help you, you turn it. Now this is a bit fiddly so I might be faffing around a little bit with it but hopefully you can see what I'm doing but I'll, ju I'll just get on with it. Um, so the first thing is just sort of get it over and get it lined up on the so I've got the back one sort of that's there's a slot that sits over the pins then the front one you've got to sort of try and get it lined up so that the the pins line up with those holes and then once I've got it on there start turning it to, to just press that that plate on now if you're, you're struggling to hold this there is a little handle that screws in here so I'll screw this handle in here and then you can kind of uh, hold it all in hold it all in place right so and what I do now is I start turning that in and that's pressing that front plate on now I feel that going on so what I do then is I, I, I just keep checking I find it's it's best just to keep checking and keep checking and make sure everything's going on straight rather than damaging it so I'm looking at there and I'm looking to see that both pins are going through fairly evenly um, I think they are I'll just zoom in a little bit further move that round so it's in the center of the picture right so hopefully you can see there so this is the soft link that's going on I'm pressing this plate on and um, I'm just wanting to make sure that it goes on evenly at, at both sides and it's you know it's not um, it's not twisted round because uh, I don't want to be bending or damaging the pins on that link It and now that's going on now they're they are now flush those pins are flush but I need to push it in further than that so that they are uh, prominent because then I'm going to mushroom those out with the the other attachment that goes on the tool and it's at this point that when I'm squeezing it in I want to make sure that I'm not squeezing it in too far so I'll, once I've got got it a little bit further I'll start measuring that against the other links and see how it's doing so Push it in a little bit further, I think. Whoops. I'm just um, going to get this um, lined up so that the holes in this plate lined with the pins. You won't be able to see, but I'm just peering through the, the hole there. And that allows the pins to come past the plate, the pressing plate pressure plate whatever it's called right and again I always just do it in little increments and keep checking so now you can see those are prominent those are so I've pressed the plate right on there let's just move down a little bit yeah so what I'm going to start doing now is um, just measuring that with my my gauge so I've got my, my Vernier gauge here, so switch it on, zeroed. So this is the this is the plate next to the one I'm putting on, the link next to the one I'm putting on. So I'll just measure, see what that one is. Um, that's coming out at twenty point eight seven. I'm going to be nowhere near that one yet, so no. So I can push that a little bit further, but I want to try and get it as, as close to that as I, as I can, so I know I've not pressed that link in too far. So get this set up and give it another another little squeeze. See where that gets me. So let's get this lined up again. Let's say it's a bit fiddly getting it on but it's actually fairly easy to use once you've got it lined up there we are right so just squeeze that in a little bit more I've quite got that bottom pin lined up That's just a little bit further. So, 
see what that one's coming out at now. That's 20.94, the other one was 20 point, this one was 20 point, eight seven measure this one yeah that's that's twenty point six five so we're we're pretty close I'm just gonna nip it up just a little bit further just a little bit further but we're almost there Right, see what that measures at. Twenty point six foot. Oh, can you see that? Well, I'll get my hand, my hand out of the way. That's uh, twenty point six four. That one's coming out twenty point seven one that time. Didn't measure it very exactly, and that one's twenty point seven four. So. I'm happy that that is great and it's not it's not too tight I can see looking in from the I'm looking in from the back here I can see that those um, egg washers are not crushed um, one other thing I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to spin the chain round so that that link is free on the other side and I'm just going to make sure that it, it moves freely so just spinning that round and um, yeah that 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 link is nice and free it's not tight in any way so now what I'm going to do is mushroom these um, links over so I need to change my the, the, the tool over I've just moved the camera down here just to show you what I'm doing uh, to change this tool over because to be honest this is probably the most confusing bit of it so what I've done is I've just taken this this plate off this is the the plate that I was using Remember to push push uh, the the front plate of the the link on the front side of the link on. Take that off, and then on the tool, there's actually two threads. There's this main thread, but then at the back there's a smaller thread, and you need to undo this. Try and stay in camera here. Undo this, and then in the in the kit there are a number of pins, and this is a pin which the the end of that then uh, mushrooms it just fits into the link and mushrooms that link over so it, it's kind of beveled now the reason why i should probably go out and buy a new one of these uh, a better quality one is this is the this is the bit that always fails because it's just not made out of hard enough metal on the on the cheap uh, kits and you might be able to see that this is actually distorted slightly it's, it's no longer totally straight and i've actually had to Rebevel that end a couple of times just done it on the bench uh, grinder uh, that that um, if I just hold it in a little bit uh, more close to the camera don't know if that'll focus get my hand behind that um, there you can probably see where I've I've um, ground that down again um, yeah so that's the that's the kind of the weak bit on on the cheaper ones but as I said, I use it all the time. I use it regularly and it still works. But yeah, I, I, I will go out and buy myself a decent one. Anyway, there's a little spring goes over that. And then that goes inside the main body. And then you screw this smaller thread back in. And what happens then is the um, that pin, you can see there. Now, can you see? That closer that pin then starting to come out there yeah and then you can wind that in and uh, amp it down so put this back plate back on for support and I'll get the camera back onto the uh, chain and I'll show you how I finish the job off right we've got the camera focused back in the link remember this is a soft link these are the little bits there you can see the the hollow bit and that's where the end of that tool goes in and then mushrooms that that out so um yeah i need the black attachment on the on the back as well so this is the bit that goes on the back of the tool which then just goes behind the individual pins as i'm as i'm uh, using it get that lined up and then what i do is 
turn it down now don't know if you can see that I'll tell you what I'll just move the camera again so you can see what's actually going on there right how's that for a camera angle um, pretty good camera that. so you see so you can see so I, you, I, I've got that um, pin now is pushing it the end of the bit link and as I tighten that down that mushrooms it out and it's as simple as that really and it doesn't require much that's uh, that's probably done it there and what I what again what I do to check is get my gauge out again um, So this top link I've not done yet, so I just measure that and that's coming out at 5.32, do it a couple of times, just to try it in different angles, it's coming out at 5.26 from that, that angle. If I can try it from round here as well. Five point two nine. Right. So I've got that as a reference, so I can see how much that has mushroomed out. So that's coming out at five point two eight. So that looks like it's not actually mushroomed out very much. So we'll go in there and give it another go and see so clamp it down and then just tighten this in to um, mushroom it out let's see what that looks like now right measuring that one then just check that five that's coming out at just under about 5.4 that one again 5.48 so just give that top one another little turn whoops and then uh, I think I'm happy with that and then I always just double check that the, uh, the the chain link has got free movement again one last squeeze on that okay. let's give that another little measure Five point four eight. Five point four eight. Oh, exactly the same. They don't have to be. But um, yeah, that's good. Right. So uh, I just spin that round again, and I'm just double checking that that I've got full free movement in that link. Yes, I have. So there we are. That is the new gold DID chain fitted so I still need to adjust the chain now so what I'll do next job is I'll um, adjust the chain um, so it's the correct tension and then uh, I've got to uh, torque down the front sprocket still and then put the, the front sprocket cover and, and the master cylinder on and everything um, but as I said, it's easier to do that, get the bike off the workbench, get somebody sitting on it, holding the rear brake, and uh, and then you can torque it down. So that is essentially it. That is the new gold chain on the bike. I'll just zoom, finish off by zooming the camera out and have a, a, a look at that nice new chain. Right, it's hard to get decent light on it here in the workshop, but yeah, isn't that lovely? That looks great. Much nicer than the old chain. And... Uh, 
hopefully that will last me a good while. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you are considering doing this job yourself, I hope you found it uh, useful. Um, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.